This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Since Poland went through a transfer of power just over a month ago, the country has fallen deep into political turmoil. You might have seen some dramatic headlines like MPs arrested in presidential palace or jailed ex-minister starts hunger strike. But what on earth is it all actually about? In this video, we're going to explain the ongoing political struggle in Poland, the historic rivalry between its two biggest parties, and whether the recent escalation could trigger a constitutional crisis. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Since Poland's new government came to power in mid-December, political tensions between Prime Minister Donald Tusk's civic coalition and the former ruling party Law and Justice, or PIS, have escalated. A couple of specific events have sparked this, the first being the government's state media reforms and the second being the imprisonment of two ministers from the previous administration, who have been convicted of abuse of power. We'll come back to the long-standing rivalry between the incumbent coalition and PIS in more detail later, but first let's look at what's happening right now. On December the 20th, Tusk's government, which has pledged to return Poland to a liberal European democracy, took control of the country's publicly owned television, radio and news agency, removing members of the nationalist PIS party from key positions. Polish media are financed by mandatory license fees paid by the public, and by statute are meant to be unbiased. But under the PIS leadership from 2015 onwards, journalists seen as unfavourable to the government were sacked. Tusk's current government, therefore, sees the media as having become a propaganda outlet for the PIS, so is trying to reset the balance by removing those brought in under the PIS's eight-year rule. However, groups of PIS voters have been gathering daily outside the broadcaster's premises in Warsaw, telling reporters that they want to defend free speech, and last week, on January the 11th, tens of thousands of people marched to Poland's parliament to protest the media reforms. Separately, but around the same time in late December, a Polish court not under political control issued two-year jail sentences to two major PIS politicians for abuse of power, while they were leading a corruption case back in 2007 that aimed to destroy a party that was a PIS coalition partner. This followed a decision by the Polish Supreme Court ruling that a pardon issued in 2015 by the Polish president and PIS member Andrzej Duda was invalid. The two MPs, Marius Kaminski, former interior minister, and his deputy Maciej Wasik, went into hiding in Duda's presidential palace earlier this month, where they remained for hours before police went in to arrest them. They're both in prison now, with Kaminski calling his conviction an act of political revenge, and saying he would go on hunger strike. The PIS has said that they are political prisoners, and Duda has called on Tusk to release them, but Tusk remains adamant that this won't happen. In his own words, Tusk wants to convince all politicians in Poland that they are not above the law. So, to understand where this has all come from, let's look at some recent political history. For decades, Polish politics has been a tug of war between two parties, the nationalist right-wing Law and Justice Party, or PIS, and the centre-right Civic Platform Party. The PIS led its first government from 2005 to 2007, but its rule was cut short by accusations of corruption and sexual harassment against its leader. When an early election was called in 2007, Tusk's civic platform won with a solid majority. Tusk served as Prime Minister until 2014, when he resigned to serve as President of the European Council. But in the 2015 election, Civic Platform failed to produce a candidate as popular as Tusk, and they lost to the PIS, who governed for two consecutive terms until Tusk's four-party Civic Coalition narrowly won a majority in October 2023. However, the recent PIS government was racked by scandal, and Tusk's coalition is now trying to undo its cronyism and alleged corruption. In 2019, a former Speaker of Poland's Lower Parliamentary House resigned over accusations he took more than 100 personal flights on a government jet. A former finance minister was accused of having links to a criminal group, and the head of the central bank, a close friend of PIS leader Jarosław Kaczynski, was involved in a pay scandal in which two senior aides reportedly earned more than 13 times the national average. 
The EU, concerned about judicial independence and PIS influence in the courts, has blocked over 100 billion euros in funding for Poland. And Tusk claimed he's now doing everything in his power to restore trust with the EU in order to access the frozen funds. It's already proving difficult though, and on Monday, Tusk's government was blocked by a Polish court when trying to sack a senior prosecutor. The government had been trying to dismiss Darius Barski, who successfully ran as an MP for PIS in 2011, while refusing to give up his legal role. However, the Constitutional Tribunal, whose head Julia Pebeliska is, surprise surprise, a close friend of PIS leader Kaczynski, moved to block the decision. President Duda claims the government justice minister lacks the authority to unilaterally sack the state prosecutor, while Tusk's justice ministry argues Barsky's appointment was political and invalid. You get the picture. The PIS is still fighting with the civic coalition, while the courts are in the middle, and, well, it's a bit of a mess. So where does all this lead? Well, in Warsaw, Tusk and Duda are continuing to butt heads, as neither is prepared to budge on the rule of law dispute. Duda has described Tusk's media reforms as attempts to violate the law, adding that he won't rest until the two convicted PIS politicians are released. Meanwhile, Tusk blames Duda for his part in the, quote, devastation of the rule of law and legal order in Poland since 2015 under the previous PIS government. Since Tusk has struggled to deliver on some of his election promises after taking office, Duda has seized the opportunity to cause disruption, first by delaying Tusk's appointment as PM, then by vetoing Tusk's December budget bill, and now kicking off about his media reforms. Moreover, the ongoing issue of the two convicted PIS ministers risks triggering a constitutional crisis. While the current coalition sees the arrests as a way to reassert democratic accountability, Tusk's decision to clear out other PIS members from bodies including academic and social insurance institutions has been viewed by some as too heavy-handed. Restoring judicial independence across Poland's courts, whose integrity was compromised by years of political appointments by the PIS, will be a huge challenge to Tusk's government over the coming months. Whatever decisions are made, we should probably expect a period of prolonged political turbulence in Poland, and debate about the strength of Poland's constitutional system will be at the centre of it all. Whatever the future may hold, it will always be important to keep yourself safe online. Fortunately, when it comes to your digital safety, NordVPN has your back. It's an unfortunate reality that online scams and phishing attacks are on the rise, with us constantly bombarded by annoying notifications and emails that we forgot we even signed up to. It's easy to click the wrong link. One seemingly innocent link can compromise security and bring things crashing down. With the protection of NordVPN though, you can use their threat protection feature to identify potentially suspicious links. Even if you reached a suspicious website, NordVPN's data encryption tools would protect you and your data against a number of other attacks, such as malicious man-in-the-middle breaches. But if things do go wrong, NordVPN's dark web monitoring is always scanning for your compromised details across the entire internet, and can even notify you before you even notice anything's gone wrong. So if you want to securely connect to that free Wi-Fi at your local coffee shop without worrying about someone trying to take a peek at your personal data, you can sign up for a two-year plan with a massive discount and four months free at nordvpn.com forward slash TLDR. We've been told that sometimes our viewers just open a new tab and type in the URL themselves, and while we're certainly glad that you're using the service, you only get the discount and support the channel through that link. So if you wish to get the discount and support independent journalism further, make sure you sign up using our link. That's nordvpn.com forward slash TLDR. Thanks for your support.